I wasn't sure how to address this whole situation that we're in right now. The men's slow style being cancelled is obviously not the situation that any of us want. We all love this sport more than anything and we wouldn't fight this hard for it if it wasn't with a purpose. <sighs> all right. Before we kick off this video, I just want to say thanks a million for all the response, all the comments and reactions of our actions last weekend. It's actually unreal to see how much love there is in mountain biking and what we can accomplish as a united group of riders. And this is obviously for a much greater cause than this event only. As most of you guys probably already know by now, us male slopestyle athletes of Crankworks did not drop in for the contest on Sunday. This was obviously not something that we wanted. It's a very, very unfortunate situation. After years and years of years of trying to bring up a couple things that needs to change drastically within the sport, we've gone to the organization with letters, meetings, and tried to bring up topics that really need to change for it to make it sustainable, especially for the up and coming riders and the new blood on the circuit. Us riders presented three topics on Wednesday morning when we had our annual rider meeting where we meet and talk about what's gonna happen throughout the whole week. By the end of that meeting, we left them a letter with three different demands that we wanted to be met by Friday that week. All male athletes have together a letter with a couple of key points that we would like to change or, or address by Friday. And while everyone is here, I can just read them up loud. Unless this address by Friday, we will not be dropping in on Sunday. We demand these changes, uh, hotel covered for all athletes, including alternates. Contest to be scheduled before noon to avoid wind delays and maximize the chance of a full live stream. An appearance fee of 2,000 euros per invited male athlete. It's signed by everyone and the full email yeah. with the PDF afterwards. And for anyone that's sitting back home there now thinking that's a short period of time, these are topics that we've been trying to bring up for years and years and years and we simply didn't feel heard, taken serious and there simply haven't been any action whatsoever. We basically felt backed into a corner and this is our last alternative obviously, we didn't want this to happen at all. We had at minimum one meeting every day with the organization throughout the whole week from Wednesday leading up to the event. In the end, we couldn't come up with a solution that fits both parties, which is super unfortunate. I don't want to go too deep into detail when it comes to what actually was said in these meetings, but I do want to say that as soon as the final decision was made, Crankworks did put up a statement talking about percentage here, percentage that and whatnot, which kind of made it look like a money shakedown. And this is obviously not what we wanted. The fact that they even put that out just shows that we weren't listened to properly. We actually compromised on our demands and agreed on riding for what they offered us at that event, but we wanted a commitment for the future to come. And that was not something that they wanted to agree on and they basically didn't really motivate that more than that they can't do it, which is super unfortunate. And it's just the way it went. And I'm not sitting here to talk shit on anything. I just wanted to be straight up with you guys and I feel like I owe you a explanation of what actually happened. I feel like us riders try to keep it as professional as possible when we went out with our statement and stuff. There's so many topics that was brought out throughout the week and we basically are all striving for a better and sustainable sport of slope style. Everything from food, accommodation, simple necessities throughout the week, safety, safety was a huge concern from our side. And then there's also the money side to it, which was not meant to be a money shakedown from our side. We did compromise on the money front. When they put out their statement saying that they raised their budget with 37%, 37% out of almost nothing is not a lot of money still. The thing is that we're putting our lives on the line every single event. And if you end up last in an event, yet alone getting injured in practice, you won't get any money. If you get last an event, that won't even cover the insurance to go to the event. Because no company wants to insure our sport, because obviously it's a very, very dangerous sport. And the only ones that do, 
costs a lot of money. There's so many factors to play into this and I'm not gonna go into detail and talk about every single topic but the problem you guys have seen from the screen and social media is basically this big but the whole thing that we're asking for and we want to change is this big. We want a bigger, better slope style for the future and we want the new generation that are coming in to actually be able to do the sport. Because without the riders, there won't be any sport. And we're not talking about money only. I just want that to be super, super clear. This wasn't really a money shakedown in the end. It was one of the topics we brought up. We wanted commitments to everything. We wanted it in, in written form, not verbal. Yeah. It wasn't met and you guys shouldn't believe everything you see in social media there's a lot more to it than you think us riders did have an amazing time on the course we rode practice all week long pushed each other had a great time with girls seeing them on the course for the first time was absolutely amazing and i'm super super proud of how much they killed it it was absolutely insane to watch them kill it all week long i'm gonna bring you guys back to the beginning of the week where we do practice and everything that goes on between practices and whatnot Right, and then you can keep left a little bit. What do you mean? And then like I come that? through the middle. Don't go too but, close. No, yeah. we, we need some space. Like that? Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Maybe not that close. Yeah, I said don't go close. <laughs> okay. But I'm upside down and you're on the table. <laughs> Okay boys, you ready? Yeah. Uh, right. If I'm going after you, you can stay back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Tom! <laughs> Thursday today, day two of practice. Yesterday was more of a testing day and today should be the first real day of practice. As per usual, quite windy today, but the top should be working quite good. We were just warming up a little bit on the quarter pipe there and we just ended up. A bunch of riders trying to work out how to go after each other to a flare and the mathematics just didn't add up in our heads. We should be able to do that math, but we couldn't. <laughs> we didn't successfully land a full run. Couple more days of practice, so I'm gonna piece this day out. Uh, quite focused on just the top, I'd say. And then I'm gonna work my way down the run. That's such a stress, the first one. Every year, just the Nolly 3 is the most stressful one of the whole week for me to just bang off. Because you're literally just going up the flat drop, throwing yourself over the bar while doing a 360, and it's just <laughs> good to have that over. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh. Let's build on that, let's do a few, and then hopefully do a Nolly 3 on turn now, which is. <laughs> yeah. I actually just stuck through it and uh, worked on that because wait we didn't film it yep. we filmed it on our, on our Instagram <laughs> clip so we'll put it in there I went through maybe 10 15 lolly threes before I ended up actually managing to pull it in every year it's such a battle to get this uh, nolly three on turn down and it's such a hard and technical one when it comes to timing super keen on that day one of practice i didn't expect that at all but excited for some more sessions in the afternoon i brought your thank you so much how was it you learned it nah no fuck i know it works so good at home but here not it had two crashes now so it'll be dumb but it's fine <laughs> but you're healthy and had two crashes that's actually so like confidence boosting that's true yeah we crash a few more times and then we win it no let's do it <laughs>
ended up being quite a successful second session as well. Um, I really just needed to put a lot of work into that spine and step down because that was actually one of the reasons why I didn't get my run together last year. Uh, wasn't really planning on doing a full link on it. I managed to do an off a track bar back, two or three tuck to bar, which is cool. I'm not 100% sure if that's gonna stick for the run, but it's a good start. Actually, such a good day in, in, in general, like managed to knock off two really like key features that are really hard and technical and takes a lot of effort to, uh, to learn. So today we got Max Friedrichsen and we are looking at his Cannondale Dave. Max, can you go to your bike? Yeah, it's been quite a slow morning to be honest. Uh, it's Friday today and we got today, tomorrow and then obviously Sunday morning before the actual event practice. Uh, I'm feeling super comfortable on the course and excited to get after it. Just gonna do like an hour now during morning practice and work on this wall right in the background here because it's actually quite tricky and it's always a feature that I forget to work on. Nothing like having heavy landings in the morning. It feels boring to do a bar up, no hand or off, but it's not really that many options when you're going 100 miles an hour into a walk. Just enjoy it. I do actually do do that, but I just, this whole situation with crankers just pisses me off so much, I can't really enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. But like, yeah, like as soon as we get on the bikes, I'm like super happy and so. Yeah, the course is running great, dude, so. Insane, huh? Yeah, it's... So much time, huh? I think you got it for sure. Oh shit! <laughs> Yesterday was a super successful day on course actually, we had such a great practice day and uh, today's Saturday, it's supposed to be our last practice day before we're dropping in tomorrow which is Sunday. I'm feeling really comfortable and confident on course, I don't really need to do much more. I've done all my basics, I've lined up all my tricks, I'm just gonna have to work on that no spunk feature. Should be a little bit of rain rolling in later today so we're gonna, we're up bright and early for morning practice today. No, we're gonna go buy drinks. God. <laughs> so. I wasn't sure how to address this whole situation that we're in right now. We've been doing practice all week long, we've been having an amazing time on course and I've been super happy about that, but ever since Wednesday when we show up for the first rider meeting, there have been a discussion, a rider strike have been going on behind the scenes that you guys weren't aware of and we've had countless of meetings. It's a huge thing that is ongoing right now within the sport. We're trying our best right now to change the sport into something sustainable and uh, long term. After going back and forth ever since Wednesday when we left our first letter uh, asking for some demands to be met, um, we've been having countless meetings, we've been having different offers back and forth here and there. Uh, we haven't been able to come to a conclusion where both parties are satisfied or it's working out. Our ultimate thing was that we won't ride because it's literally not worth it for us guys. Um, it's quite emotional, It's it's been a really really frustrating and emotional and draining week. All of us riders have been staying up until the middle of the night 
writing letters, having discussions. We are 16 riders, fully united, speaking with each other and trying to come up with the best possible way to save our sport in the way that we make it sustainable. It's gone so far now that we are actually not gonna drop in for the contest this weekend, which is super unfortunate. And I feel extremely bummed about that. There will be a press release that we're heading down for right now. We all love this sport more than anything and we wouldn't fight this hard for it if it wasn't with a purpose. We're still gonna support all the ladies. We are gonna be here and try to be as much as we can for the fans and try to respect our friend Kelly McGarry uh, for the Magasa train that is happening. Um, and we're not riding. After a crazy week like that, we had the best time ever on course. As soon as we're on our bikes, we're all happy and it's all good. But then there's so many external factors that go in to be a professional rider that you guys behind the screen don't know. And uh, we're not asking for much really, but it's such a difference of levels in the sport and it has to be changed. All riders are walking down for the press conference now. Um, we're gonna send in Nikolai to speak on behalf of all the riders. Shit, it's the fan off there after this basically but yeah it's crazy times right now and we're gonna walk in and it's a bit weird the male folkstyle athletes approached the crankworks team at the official riders meeting on Wednesday, March 20th. We are not looking to discuss these terms with you. We are looking for a clear and direct answer by Friday. We need proof that the above will, the above have been addressed and taken care of by Friday the 22nd of March. Verbal agreement will not be accepted and is signed by all of the male athletes. We have not been able to um, find a solution. Um, the women's soap style contest will go on. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Artie. And uh, thank you for your time this week in uh, dealing with this issue. I'm up here representing all the riders, and uh, I have this small note on behalf of us. The news that has come out from Crankworks of the men's soap style being cancelled is obviously not the situation that any of us want, especially after all the discussions we have had with the organization this week. The issues that have been raised over the last few years that were under discussion have had impact on everyone involved. It was finally time for a change. As the top slopestyle riders on the planet, we come to these events and risk everything for the fans around the world and for the event to happen every time. The way the events have been set up has become unsustainable and for some, an unattainable situation. We are deeply sorry to the fans and to the organizers that this has to be the outcome right now. This is a decision we do not take lightly. We all love this sport and we are striving for it to be better for the future and for the next generation riders of the sport. We will be there for Sunday to support the women who have been killing it all week as well as for the legendary Magaza train. We will have more information for everyone in a timely manner. Thank you. God, that's crazy. I can tell you. Thanks for all cheering me for the show. It went well. Nikolai did an amazing job. But it's a really, really tough situation right now for everyone. I think I've never been this sad or down during an event because this is quite far like it's been taken so far but over years and years and years of working towards this it was just a ticking bomb really so yeah it's really tough and you can't help but to feel blame and bad about not putting on a show for the people all the fans that are here and coming up to us saying everything but we're still gonna be there and support the girls and stuff so at least that's something and we're definitely gonna take photos of everyone but uh, a piece piece of history right here being made i've been in this sport for a decade decade and a half and uh, this is the first time ever i'm seeing all these riders actually united 
because something needs to change and this is what change looks like unfortunately right now the biggest thing that i have happened to crankworks and slope style the sport of slope style itself uh, i've ever been a part of so tough day very emotional right now actually all right today's the day off uh, as you guys know, we won't be riding today. Uh, we came together all as a group yesterday, all the boys uh, making a press release and a statement. Put that out for the world and uh, I just want to say in here and now, like thanks a million for all the response, for having our backs. Company, sponsors, fans, people, I haven't got this many messages at a contest. It's really heartwarming to see that we have such a strong community in biking there uh, that supports our cause. It's for a greater good. Yeah, everyone of the, in the rider field posted it at the same time. Pink bike, all big mainstream uh, mountain bike media platforms posted it as well. It's so heartwarming to see that people actually take the time to read and understand our side of this. And uh, as I said, there's so many things that goes into this that aren't shown in our little statement. There's so much more to it, but I don't know if I'm gonna show that now or if I'm ever gonna show that, but Today we're actually on site. We're gonna support the girls. They are doing their first ever contest today. So we wanna be here, we wanna support them. And I feel so bad for them actually because it's been raining all day long. So they're gonna ride a fully new course. That would be my nightmare if I would drop in today. So uh, then just hang out with fans, greet everyone, have a good time and have a good contest day. Not doing a contest. What do you guys do about these conditions? Quite windy. Did they torch the wall now? Yeah, they did. Yeah. It's good. Thanks, guys. Sorry for letting you down. Don't apologize, bro. Actually, next year will be better. It's the only time we have any. Our new ride. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. Yeah, of course. Oh, it's both ways? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. That's good, then you can have it any way you want. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you guys. You too. Thank you. Boom. Thank you. We just wrapped up uh, watching the woman. They put on one hell of a show. It was so good to see everyone coming down healthy. Yeah, everyone just absolutely killed. It was good to see. Like the whole vibe here at the contest venue just absolutely changed. As soon as the contest kicked on, it was like, yes. And we got to do the Mokyasa train as well. And uh, yeah, actually it's such a good day. I'm happy to see it. It was such a great show in the end. I also want to say thanks a lot for watching. If you're still watching this, that means that you are actually interested in the thing we're doing. It's for a bigger cause than one event only. Us riders are deeply sorry that we didn't ride a contest on Sunday for all the fans that were on site, all the local organization committee and everything. We are very, very sorry about that. This was something that had been going on for years and years and years, and there's never gonna be a right time to do this properly. Anyways, basically what I wanted to say with this video is that there's a lot more to the story than you guys actually know. And uh, the problem we're looking at is not this that was addressed on Instagram. I think personally that us writers put out a very professional statement that we didn't really go into detail about everything because Crankworks did. It kind of left out a big part of the story where we gave them more letters than just one on Wednesday morning. We are going to try to find a solution with everything and we want this sport to just grow and be better and we want the best for everyone yet again thanks a lot for the support and all the reactions you guys are the best because you